Hi everyone, good to see you. Friday the 23rd of April. We've talked this week about uh, prayer as a vow. Uh, we've talked about uh, the prayer of Rebecca, uh, the prayer of inquiry. We've talked about prayer as groan and cry. Yesterday, Thursday, we talked about prayer as a dialogue and an honest communication between you and the Lord. Today, we want to talk a little bit about one of my favorite and uh, maybe most practiced prayers. <laughs> and that's the prayer of complaint. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of kid. <laughs> the prayer of complaint. Moses, in our story here in Exodus, in chapters 3 and 4, uh, through a dialogue, was called, to, called by God, Yahweh, to go back to Egypt and uh, set God's people free. Well, uh, Moses goes with Aaron to Pharaoh in the beginning of chapter 5. And uh, things don't go so well. <laughs> Let's say that. Things don't go so well at first. Uh, they, and you can imagine why it hasn't gone so well. They, Moses and Aaron, go to Pharaoh and say, Look, you know, uh, it's time for you to let the people of Israel go. Um, God has asked us to come get them back and uh, to, to return them to the promised land. And Pharaoh says, look, the people of the land are now numerous and you are stopping them from working. So Pharaoh's none too happy of really what's going on here. Well, how could he be, of course? And so uh, Pharaoh begins to make the work harder for the people and uh, that they would keep working and pay no attention to the lies, the lies. Pharaoh says, of Moses and Aaron. So then we, this is kind of the pattern. <laughs> Moses is not making it better for Israel, but worse. And Pharaoh is starting to take it out on the, the people of God. And so chapter 5 of Exodus and verse 22 through the end of the chapter are chapter says, uh, the, the um, verse says, Moses returned to the Lord and said, Why, Lord, have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on this people, and you have not rescued your people at all. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, maybe Moses is acting out of anger here alone. Maybe Moses is getting comfortable in his relationship with God. I don't know what it is, but no more pardon your servant, Lord. <laughs> nope. Uh, those times are over. Pardon your servant, Lord. He just goes right to God and says, why have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? Well, Moses knows better. Of course it's not. God sent Moses to set his people free. But Moses is being, again, honest and authentic and complaining. What are you thinking, God? You sent me to set the people free, but Pharaoh's just clamped down harder on them. He's brought trouble on this people, and I'm the one who is the messenger of this trouble. I think Moses is acting out of love for the people of God. I mean, that's why Moses originally killed the Egyptian. That's why Moses had to leave Egypt and flee to Midian. But God's response is not loving towards the people at all. I should say, Pharaoh's response isn't. But now Moses 
is blaming God. What do we do with this? <laughs> Moses' conclusion is, you have not rescued your people at all. I'm wondering, have you ever prayed a prayer like this? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I suppose it, it does, of course, depend on how you see God. You've certainly not prayed this kind of a prayer if you're uh, afraid of God in the sense that God will smite you <laughs> if you complain to him. You, you certainly haven't prayed this prayer if you think yourself unworthy of God's attention. You certainly have, haven't prayed this prayer uh, if you aren't honest before the Lord. And I say that because I know you. You're like me. It's human nature to complain. It's human nature to blame God. And so what do, what do we learn from this text? Again, we learn a lot by God's response. In chapter 6 and verse 1, the Lord says to Moses, What are you thinking, man? I'm God and you're not. Shut your trap. <laughs> No, that's not what God says to Moses. <laughs> Although we would expect that. Uh, we would expect that God maybe smote Moses. Oh yeah, take that. Bam! <laughs> but that's not what God does either. Verse 6 reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty right hand, he will let them go. Because of my mighty right hand, he will drive them out of his country. Ah, oh, God. Listen, friends. God is not upset at Moses. God will not smite. God did not smite Moses. God did not defend himself before Moses. Nope. God said, I, I will do this. And you will see it's not you, but me. And Pharaoh will see it's not you but me and the people will see it's not you it's me god is a jealous god that's what the bible says our god is a god who seeks glory for himself and this is what god is doing here bring your complaints to the lord offer yourself in moments of honesty and authenticity. God can handle it. God wants to hear from you. And God wants to glorify himself, not you. And so, here's what I want you to do today. You're already well ahead of me, of course. But I'd like you to find a, a place where you can be alone and undisturbed. A place where maybe you can find some silence and and solitude and then I want you to to the best of your ability <laughs> complain to the Lord <laughs> now you, you might be thinking to yourself man that's just silly I mean here my my pastor is encouraging me to to go to the Lord in com in complaint yeah I do. That is my encouragement. I am encouraging you to do that. And I don't want you to make something up. That's not what I'm saying here. But I want you to really consider something that God has done that or not done that you haven't complained about. And then most importantly, I want you to be in that place of silence and solitude. And I want you to listen. I want you to, to hear God's response to you. I don't know what God's going to do. <laughs> but I trust that he's going to use that time this time as a time of teaching and molding and forming and transforming you 
into the image and likeness of Christ. Again, I'd love to hear what God's doing your, in your life. Send me a, a text or an email. Uh, give me a call. The offices are open. The, the church phone is uh, up and running. would love to hear from you. Uh, how is God working in your life in prayer? Let us pray. God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this beautiful setting, this beautiful spring. Uh, God, this new season of hope and expectation. Mold, shape, make us, form us, transform us uh, deeper into your image and likeness for the sake of others around us. And most importantly, God, we pray that for your glory, for your honor, do this. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, love you, miss you. We're taking steps to, to move towards more normal routine and uh, hope to see you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.